the UFC returns to Brazil this weekend with an absolutely stacked fight card. This is one you don't want to miss. I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook to bring you closer to the action. Right now, all new customers that bet $5 will get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings app right now. Sign up using my code SUNNEN. The crown is yours. Staying on the action and use your 200 in bonus bets on DraftKings same game parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same fight, including number of rounds and method to victory. The more bets you combine, the more you can win. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy with a shot to win all sorts of prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers can bet just $5 on any fight and receive 200 in bonus bets instantly with promo code SUNNEN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Islam was weighing in on uh, 155 pounds. I, I wish Islam would do more of this, by the way. There's a segment that, that Anik and Florian do. I can't remember what it was called, but it, but it was a weekly talk with Ray Longo. Every week, they do, they do their whole show. Coach Longo would call in, hit it, boom, he's out. And I loved it. It was this great piece. I wish somebody would do that with Islam. That's it. Like, Bahal Mohammed is very busy with podcasting, or O'Malley, right? Like, somebody that's consistent and is out there, I wish they would do a weekly piece with Islam. You come up with what you're going to call it. Weekly take with Islam. I think he's very good. I think he is very clever. I think he is secretly humorous and charismatic. But it's a slippery slope with the ideology of many people from that team where they are competitors first. The I mean, they understand that entertainment is important, but there is such a gap between competitor first that comes with sportsmanship and honor, just like they're teaching the younger boys that want to be like them. Then there's a gap to the next, and Islam weighed in. I'm just explaining to you why you don't hear a lot of these things from Islam, but every time he speaks, it's something interesting. For example, what he said this morning. That the ideal opponent that he wanted is Justin Gaethje, but Justin just lost, and the only one left is Poirier. So that's who they're going to fight next. And Poirier has an obvious deficit in his game, and that's with his grappling. So that's what they're going to exploit. Wow, there's a lot on that. First off, your ideal opponent is Justin Gaethje. How come? Nobody wants to fight Justin Gaethje. Max Holloway just fought Justin Gaethje. Max never called for that fight. Prior to that, Poirier fought Justin Gaethje. Poirier didn't call for the fight. Gaethje did, just to remind you. Nobody ever says that they want to fight Justin Gaethje. Many people do it because they get phone calls and offered, and that's the way the wind has decided to blow, but nobody asks for it. So when he says, I'm talking Islam here, that Gaethje is there, meaning the team's ideal opponent, I would like to know why. I think you would as well. What do you see? Why, why him? What did he do? Is this personal? Share with me. He then said that Dustin Poirier has an obvious deficit in his game. Do you agree with that? He went on to say that it's the grappling, but without me telling you what he said it was, would you co-sign the, same, the statement, Dustin Poirier has an obvious deficit in his game? Will you co-sign that statement in any regard? I don't think you will. I don't think that you do agree with that. So if they're going to fight, and the reason they're going to fight to further Islam's thought is because Sir Karrion, who many of you say is the one that should get this, has refused the fight, of which is true. Sir Karrion backed it up and said he didn't want to do it. But I'm just, I'm just wondering, what do you do then? Like, there was a problem that came about in 2023 that if Chael had one wish going into the new year, we would find a way to not do what we did throughout 2023, which was we had multiple number one contenders at the same time. I, Chael the fan, did not like that. I, Chael the fan, love when a couple, three guys, four guys, if we're really lucky, see the writing on the wall and understand that from a logical standpoint, they could be the number one contender, but so could him and him. So now we're going to fight in the media. I like that. 
I think that's fun. I need clicks over here for what I do. I'm a little talking head, just saying words into a microphone, hoping that you guys will watch. But I, I need topics. And it becomes very easy to have topics when you have multiple guys fighting for the same thing that are never going to throw a punch. They're going to do it through the media. They're going to do it through calculating. They're going to do it through strategies. They're going to do it through clips and social media. They're going to make a video here and there. And these other guys are going to have a manager send out a text from here and there. Like whatever it is that they can do, they're going to bring that best foot forward. I like that. And we take that away. We denut the ability to fight for and or need to fight for number one contendership. We take it away when we have two in line already. And we did that three different times in 2023. We had only done it one time throughout history. And then in 2023, we did it three times. In fact, the one time through history that we did it was it something called UFC 246, where Francis Ngannou knocked out Rosenstruck. Dana went to the press conference and said, Francis is next for the heavyweight championship. And the reason that was different is because Stipe and Cormier was already signed. So now you've got Francis sitting right here. That doesn't, he's got to wait till these guys are done. Wait for the injury reports. Wait for the healing process. Go through the, the bout agreements, the training camp, the build. And oh, by the way, the six months that that took, which was, uh, I think, ended up being seven. Nobody else in that division called for number one contendership or called out somebody to fight for number one contendership. There was no reason to. The nuts had been chopped off the entire argument when this was already stated. So in this case, I don't think that there is a reasonable argument where Aram Sarukin doesn't get that opportunity when he heals up. I just don't think that anybody else is there that has done a good enough job. I don't think Gaethje and Gamrot are clever enough to, to work it out and find their way to each other to, to even make an argument. I don't think Max Holloway was clever enough to stay in that fight just to leverage it against what he wanted at 145. So in that vein, we likely are to have Sarkarian. And if we do that knowing that Poirier is next, but knowing that Gaethje is the one that wanted, and we're going to honor this system, we're going to honor the, the, the system that is right there in front of us, and we have to honor it because nobody else is fighting for it, nobody else is even coming for it. But it's like any job, if one person shows up for the interview and no one else shows up, even if you don't want this person, you're hoping this guy would apply, but this guy didn't apply, this guy gets the job, right? I mean, it's not like some kind of rocket science, but I can't be my usual dick of a self and come in and scold the 155-pound division. I can't do that. If we're going to have a number one contender who's allowed to wait because we've got the title match that is still to come, and now we've taken up the entire calendar year of 2024, that wasn't just the boys being an ep that found a way to sandhag their own division. The balls were chopped off the idea of fighting for a number one contender because you already got two.